friends, welcome to the first episode of Women in STEM. Today with me I have Tamara Miktovska, a former Math Olympiad participant, a current MIT Computer Science major, a voracious reader and an eager traveler. Apart from being one of my closest college friends, she's also an amazing woman and I hope today's conversation turns out to be one of the most interesting ones that you have ever heard. Hi Tamara, welcome to the second episode of Women in STEM. Uh, before we continue with this conversation, can you introduce yourself a bit more to our viewers? Hi, Homo. Uh, thanks for having me here. So I'm Tamara. I'm from Macedonia and I'm currently finishing my second year at MIT studying computer science and engineering. So I really like traveling, reading books, doing math, stuff like that. Nice. Actually, the viewer, I mean, the person who came to you on this show before you, is also from uh, like the EGMOs, uh, and we are all from Mad Olympiad communities, I guess. Um, so can you tell me a bit more about how you fell in love with math at first? Yeah, so I think everything began in middle school. I had a really good math teacher, and I was really enjoying math classes. And most of the time, I was finishing the classwork before the others, and I was getting bored in classes. So she had a really interesting geometry book that she used to give it to me when I was bored and I used to solve the problems. And it was really fun. Like I was viewing each problem as a challenge. Mm -hmm. I think that's where all would begin. <laughs> wow. Uh, I did not used to like geometry at all. I think it's <laughs> my least favorite Olympiad subject. Uh, how, how did you go on to participate in the EGMO? Well, I think, uh, yeah, before high school, I didn't, know, I didn't know much about math competitions. So when I went to high school, I first had to take an exam to get into the math team. And then I met a lot of people who had more experience with competitions and they knew more about them. So I learned about EGMO from them and also from the professors. Um, how was the situation in Macedonia, like are girls usually very eager to participate in these math competitions? Are there a lot of girls there? So I think, yeah, at least for math, I think the number of boys and girls is pretty balanced. Wow. But there are some cases in other competitions, for example, informatics, where there are more boys than girls. And yeah, I mean, you also know from like international Olympiads, the number of boys and girls there is not that balanced, so yeah. it's kind of a problem. So when you say the number of boys and girls in math Olympiads are pretty balanced, do you just mean like at the regional and national levels, or do you also send a lot of girls in math, like IMO in the IMO, like the IMO team? Yeah, I think also for the teams, it's, it was, yeah, both of the times when I went to IMO, I think we were like half and half boys and girls in the team. Wow. Something like that, yeah. Nice. Um, at MIT, of course, the ratio is much better, I guess, because here it's mm -hmm. like, I think, almost 50-50. So did you find it to be a more welcoming environment? Since Macedonia already had a quite balanced ratio, I don't know whether you felt the difference or not. Well, it was different because, you know, from international competitions, I was expecting it to be, like, imbalanced, but it was pretty good to see that uh, it was really like a balanced environment. And it was really useful to have, you know, someone to relate to, like some people from the same background to relate to at MIT. So you actually believe in this notion that girls find it harder um, to pursue STEM related careers. And one of the reasons could be because of the skewed ratio and they usually don't have people to collaborate with. Um, yeah, I think like some girls might have like uh, those issues. I think it depends more where you come from or your background. For example, for me, it wasn't, it was challenging, but it wasn't because, you know, because of being a girl, but it was more because of having a lack of experience because I started later than others with math competitions. So I had to overcome that. Like it was pretty discouraging at some times you know, feeling like you're always behind. But I think with hard work, I managed to overcome that and become successful. Nice. 
you also like traveling a lot, right? So you, had, you have been to several places for internships, right? You have yeah. been to India as well. Yeah. So in these different countries, do you think there is a difference in perspective? Like you would like to change your perspective regarding this gender ratio uh, according to countries. Do you think there are, like you saw different workplace atmospheres for women in these countries? So, yeah, I went to India like last summer and I noticed, I went to one research institute and I noticed there was a huge imbalance between the students, you know, boys and girls. And yeah, we had a lot of, a lot of conver conversations about that with the local students and they were saying that it gets, it's getting better. I don't know, you probably know more about that. Mm. So there was this very interesting uh, interview that I saw by Cheryl Sandberg quite recently, actually, you know, and she said that likability actually decreases with success for women and increases for men. So people actually like successful men and they tend to dislike successful women. And there are actually studies about it. It's not like a hunch that uh, she was saying, you know, like she was exp like expressing. It was actually, there was actually a study. So once you started becoming more successful, right? So you got into Olympiads, you represented your country, then you came to MIT. So it's been a pretty like illustrious career so far like, as a student. Uh, do you think you, you found it harder to find people who like you or like uh, you found it harder to make friends? Mm, I don't know, I think at MIT it's not that hard to, you know, yeah. to find friends because- Yeah, not like, at MIT. MIT I think is like filled with just illustrious people, so. Yeah, so. Overall, like, I think out of college, I, I keep the old friends, like I don't have experience about like people not wanting to be friends with me or, you know, because of that. Mm. So, like, nothing changed once you started representing your country? Uh, not really. Like, That's a good experience. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think I, in general, I will agree with Cheryl Sandberg on this one, that I think people tend to view uh, likable women as, I don't know, mean. <laughs> uh, sorry, I mean, successful women as mean. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe at high school, at some point, uh, there were some, you know, some people who wanted to be, you know, successful and it didn't succeed. And there were some problems but I don't think like in general that that's a problem I see I don't know nice. so what would you like to tell our viewers who are women out there wanting to be successful wanting to join the stem fields so any words of advice for them yeah so I think if there is really something that you want to do and that you're passionate about you should really like just go ahead and do it and you shouldn't think too much about it and don't be afraid of failure. And I think just focusing on your work is enough. It will work out at the end. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great advice actually. Uh, especially the part about like, don't think about it and go for it. I think that's one part I find it difficult. You know, I just tend to overthink about stuff. And I'm like, oh, should I take this risk? And by the time I have probably decided that, yeah, I'll take this risk. Uh, some some situation changes and then I have to like rethink again. I mean, I think again. Yeah, so I think risk taking is a very important attitude and people should have it. Girls, guys alike. <laughs> okay, thanks for coming to the show. It was really nice talking to you. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, have a good day or good night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.